Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Uh, so today's topic is going to be different methods of doing a rinseless wash on your vehicle. Uh, before we get to that, I am going to mention that as of June 1st, California has uh, introduced drought restrictions once again. So we're back at the same place we were 15 years ago with the drought. Uh, they've changed the days, for example, to water your, your lawn is Monday, Friday. Uh, the rest of the days you're not supposed to. Uh, and there's, um, I forget the time frame of when they start fining you. The fine is $600 if you exceed your water usage and they limit the amount of uh, water flow into your into your house. Um, so you don't want to get to that point. Um, so that means a lot of rinseless washing. I've, I've done rinseless washing quite some for quite some time now. It's nothing new. Uh, I can wash back here because my neighbors aren't going to see me back here. But uh, for the most part, for, for now, uh, I'll be doing rinseless washing. I'm, and we'll try different rinseless washes here uh, that I can show you on here. But uh, today we're going to do Meguiar's D114. I opened this uh, last week. Uh, I've had this gallon for quite some time. They no longer make this product. This was the predecessor to what became like McKee's N914 and uh, other rinseless washes that uh, just straight clean versus with the surfactant type technology. Uh, that's what the D114 was here. This competed with uh, O&R for a long time uh, and people liked it because again, it left no polymers behind. It could be used as a clay lubricant. Uh, you can use it as, you could use it as a panel wipe things of that. So that, you know, N914 took that technology. I don't know if the, but where they got the technology from N914, but they took and did something similar and they created N914. Um, and then again, this is D114, which is lo no longer made. So I'm going to be using this for a while because I'm almost out of N914. And I was like, okay, let me just start picking up different rinseless washes. You know, I'll pick up the O&R. I know people have been asking me to look at the new version of O&R. So I'll pick up a bottle of that. I need to pick up a new bottle of um, Echo. Uh, what else was I going to pick up? Uh, I was just kind of just looking around to see what other rinseless washes I was interested in. Uh, and then we'll we'll try them out. But for now, I'm, I'm going to be using D114. Uh, pretty straightforward dilution. Uh, the instructions were always wrong on the back here. And McGuire's never got to um, fixing that. Uh, Four in there, but so they, this is basically one to what, 256. I have this proportional thing here, uh, so you basically just squeeze in here. I have uh, like uh, just about three and a half gallons of water, I think it's three gallons of water in there. So we're gonna do an ounce and a half in there. So it's an ounce, you squeeze it, and it hits the one ounce mark. I don't, you know, I don't even know if this thing still works because I noticed it dumps a lot of product out. So I dump that in there and I'm going to squeeze out half. Okay, right around there. Okay. So we've essentially got our mixture in there. I'm going to set that aside. What I'm going to do is actually going to mix this up with my hand. But because of, before I get started, we're gonna set up our pre-spray. And so our pre-spray, you can fill this up with water if you wanted to, your pump sprayer, and then put as much, you know, figure out the dilution, 1 to 256 into your pump sprayer. The easiest way to do it, just take your pump sprayer, dunk it in the bucket. Because we have the proper dilution mixed in here. So that's good enough. And so we have our pre-spray. Which I'll pump up in a second. Uh, as far as wash media here, I'm going to throw in some towels here. Because we're going to go over, like I said, different, uh, different methods here. I'm going to throw in a wash mitt. And I'm actually going to wash like three cars today, so... I'm throw the black sponge, everybody's favorite. So that's all gonna fit in there. And we got our drying towels here. So I decided to just use the pump sprayer today. I still think the pump sprayer works better than the SPTA. 
SPTA is good if you're just going to use foam. So just pump away. And one thing you keep in mind is uh, with D114, it's, it's very similar like to N914 where uh, it lays flat on the surface when you spray it. Let me fix this nozzle here. Huh. I don't think I put enough mixture in the bucket. The reason I can tell is because the what, uh, I didn't use anything on top last time. So I'm going to do half of this car, and then I'll pre spray the other half. Some people um, take the pre-spray too literally and say it's like, oh, why would you use a pre-spray when you're whatever form of protection, like for example, this has a coating on it and it was topped off. I don't even know what I topped off. I think I was using the graphene CS3 or something like that last time, which was like four weeks ago. They start seeing those beatings like, well, why, what's the purpose of a pre-spray if your coating is gonna reject it or your form of protection? I was like, well, the pre-spray is there for lubrication, and it's going to start helping down to uh, to break down, um, you know, some of the, the dirt on the surface. Now, if you wanted to, you could actually rinse your car off first. That's probably a safer approach. So, if you have soft paint, maybe that's the approach. You pre-soak it like this, then you pull it outside, and you rinse it off. Uh, that's probably the safer approach. Uh, to keep your car, um, what do you call it, from getting swirled up. Okay, so we're going to be using a wash mitt here. And so when you use a wash mitt, I'm going to show you something with the wash mitt. Your wash mitt's going to get dirty. And so when you've been using a wash mitt, keep in mind that you're going to be probably more than likely be using two buckets so that you can agitate your grit guard. Get this crud on here. So you can use your, your grit guard on here. I'm just gonna do this fender here. So you're probably gonna use uh, two buckets here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna just gonna rinse this out. I'm gonna, not gonna use it again. I just wanted to demo it. But you would need two buckets, one either with water or your more rinse solution in there. Okay, now we're going to go to everybody's favorite, the Ultra Black Sponge. And people start freaking out when they start using this thing on the paint and, and they start seeing dirt coming up on your towel. Okay. So this one, actually the sponge is actually the most efficient one, like the mitt. Okay, so I'm going to just go and do this side here. The thing with the, oh, I almost lost it. The thing with the, the mitt, I mean the, like this one with the mitt, the sponge, you're going to have to use a secondary bucket. to dunk this in there. Okay, so I'm done with this. I'm not going to be using it in, anymore. Uh, then we got the, the multiple towel method here. Everybody prefers this. Uh, just keep in mind that you're going to go through, some, through multiple towels. Uh, so you better have lots of towels.
usually here the sides of the car are pretty clean and all you gotta do is keep flipping the towel these are actually pluffles from the rag company keep flipping you have eight sides to work with on a towel okay so I'm gonna rest this here and we're gonna get to the drying portion here now you, here's another the optional thing you can use a um, what do you call it a drying aid if you wish I'm gonna I'm not gonna use it on the roof there. Uh, in this instance, I'm using the glass parency silica waterless wash. If I can get this trigger to work. And you're probably going, why would you use a waterless wash? But you can use whatever product you want. I just that's what I grabbed at the moment. And then just dry your paint like normal. And because I use the the sponge on the front here and then the wash mitt, yes, you're gonna pick up some dirt on your towel. Perfectly normal. Uh, the idea behind uh, a rinseless wash is that it's gonna encapsulate the dirt and allow it to be taken off the paint uh, without scratching the surface. in here for a second done with that and so let me just finish the back real fast and so I'm leaving protection behind with that with that product again it's a this, it's a silica infused product. If I wanted to, I could use a um, like Shine Supply Throttle or a Dream Maker or something if I didn't want to use protection. You can see I had some dirt on the surface here. From using the mitt and then. Uh, that's another reason why I've, when doing a rinseless wash, I like using a waterless wash as a drying aid, just in case there's some leftover dirt on the surface. I'm gonna take this part here, because I don't have anything on it. I don't wanna put anything on top of here because it's got the coating stuff on here. Uh, but again, so you can see that the wash mitt, I was able had left some dirt on the surface here, but again, they just let the product encapsulate the for you and take it off safely and then what I'll do is come back with a, another towel. I'm going to mop up this surface first so I don't cross contaminate. Okay, and then I'll come back 
and knock down the um, the waterless wash on here just in case there's excess which there shouldn't be you can get done pretty fast if you become pretty efficient doing your rinseless washing you can become pretty darn efficient and knock this out pretty fast uh, and once you start doing it more often, like I said, you get faster and faster and more efficient. You start to kind of see where, where you can kind of speed up on things. And you should be taking about, depending on how big your vehicle is, 20 to 30 minutes uh, is actually a good uh, number and amount of time to do a, uh, a rinseless wash on your car. Uh, so you're basically going to save, you should save roughly about 30 minutes, depends on how long you take when you're doing a bucket wash. Like I said, if I wasn't talking on the camera and kind of just showing you different methods, I could knock this out and you know, really, really fast. Um, so that's pretty much it in terms of the different types of wash media. When you're using a rinseless wash, you can use a wash mitt if you want. I would recommend to have a secondary bucket unless you're going to pre-soak your vehicle, pull it outside, and then rinse off that heavy dirt, come back in here, and then do a uh, traditional uh, wash with the mitt here in terms of a rinseless wash. You can do that. You can do the same thing with the sponge, uh, or you can put uh, fill up your bucket with a, a secondary bucket, your rinse bucket with uh, more rinse of solution in there so that you can take it back and forth through your wash bucket and not dilute uh, your uh, wash bucket. And uh, again, you have the multiple towel method here where you would use, again, depends on how big your vehicle is. If you're, you're efficient, I can get around the Grand Prix with like three to four towels and then be done. Um, so you can do it that way as well. Uh, that's probably the safest approach that people like to do is just use multiple towels. So have uh, many towels with you um, is it the most efficient that's completely up to you uh, for me I still think that the the sponge is the most efficient in terms of being quicker uh, and a lot of people don't like it because they start seeing dirt transfer onto their towel but that's when you kind of look into the science of your whatever rinse washer you're using and trust that it's encapsulating the dirt for you so that you can actually take it off the paint uh, uh, without damaging the, the surface there and then of course if you want to follow up with the drying aid you know just pick whatever product for today I just happened to reach for the glass parency silica waterless wash I like using a waterless wash uh, as a um, panel wipe or a, you can use a detail spray as well because detail spray does have some cleaning ability uh, but I like to use a, a waterless wash that may have some sort of protection in there if the paint's a little dirtier than uh, what you're comfortable with just in case you come back on a, on a panel, maybe onto the bottom and you, and you accidentally touch some dirt, the waterless wash will do a better job of um, keeping that th thing safe. So uh, that's pretty much it. I will come back with a video on the wheels just to show you the way I do a wheels. It's basically the same process. Um, and that's pretty much it. So again, this uh, rinseless wash should take you about 20 to 25 minutes to go around the vehicle. Again, depends on how big your car is. Uh, and again if you want to just take your time by all means take your time but for me i can get around a vehicle in about 20 minutes and be done i can get around with the camaro even faster because it's a smaller smaller car so that's pretty much it and then also with the rinseless wash keep in mind that um, when i do a rinseless wash it's optional but i don't really come back i don't come in here and and mop up the door jams if you want to take that extra step by all means do that i usually wait till i do a regular bucket wash to get into the door jams but hey if you have your waterless wash product here you why not that's just another step you can take i don't wipe down underneath the engine bay i just wipe down the exterior for the paint and the wheels and the tires and i'm done so i don't really go into that uh, thorough detail to where i can touch the door jams but if i was doing rinseless washing every day and that was my primary source of rinseless washing i would definitely get those door jams with it so again thanks for watching we'll come back with a video on the on the wheels here 
and um, I think that should be pretty much it. All right, again, thanks for watching. All right, so now we're back to just finishing up the wheels here. Again, very simple process, very similar to what you did for the paint. And I'll show you which tools I like to use. So again, just, I still have some remaining uh, solution in my pre-spray. Let me wipe off this overspray that I got on the edge here. Okay, so um, here you have uh, quite a few different tools you could use. And I'll kind of just show you the tools that I like to use. So just get yourself a soft bristle brush. I grabbed the uh, Detail Factory brush today. I'm just going to lightly scrub the tire. Again, these tires have that Chemical Guys product, so you shouldn't have to uh, clean it. If you wanted to, you can actually use a APC or a tire cleaner here. If you wanted to give them a deep clean, I don't really choose to deep clean them at the time. Uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and um, lightly agitate them, wipe them off, and then I'm just going to go ahead and touch them up. Now as far as the inner portion of the wheel, here, this is where you have uh, quite a bit of options here. So you can have yourself a wheel woolly. This is the large one. I'm just going to squeeze some of that excess product out of there. Uh, I already have pre-spray solution in the inner barrel. My inner barrels are fairly clean because I wash this car on a weekly basis. So I'm just going to go ahead and do this. And then um, I will just dump it back in the solution. Again, I'm not too worried about scratching the wheels. Now, if I didn't have space, for example, let me just squeeze this excess product out here. Um, this wheel woolly is not going to fit in every opening. Could I squeeze in here? Yeah, maybe, but you can see it doesn't really go in there. So I have a smaller woolly, which I can use to get in between the caliper. And actually, I can use this to clean the caliper because this is the angled version. And I could clean the back of the spokes here with this brush. So this is an angled version of that uh, wheel woolly. Now, if I wanted to, I could actually take a towel and just take the towel, do the work for me to pick up any dirt from the inner barrel. Again, my inner barrels are fairly clean, so it's not um, a big thing here. Uh, at the same time, I could actually take this towel and wash the face of the wheels. Pretty straightforward stuff. Uh, you can't really go wrong with this. I could dump dump it back in there and continue to use it. Uh, the other thing is, get yourself a microfiber wheel mitt, like I have from the auto fiber one here, and I can actually go over the surface and clean them up. It's pretty straightforward. You have multiple options to do that. And then I'll take a lug nut brush and get in the lug nuts here to get any dirt. Get the edges of the wheel because this is where it tends to kind of cake on brake dust. And um, get your caliper at the same time. Again, it's not going to be 100% clean um, this way, but at least, um, well, it is going to get clean. It's just, uh, I think like for the edges here, you're still gonna have a better option um, to when you clean it with your actual uh, soap, because you can actually let that, some of that kind of break it down. You can use an all-purpose cleaner too if, you're, if your rinse is washing to break it down. Um, I just want to wipe down the tire first. Uh, but again, uh, for a drying aid, I could use the same one I was using on the, on the paint here. But I took out the IGL product because I want to use this up since I'm almost done with it. Um, just spray some on there. I'm going to use a Costco towel. I don't care if this towel becomes hydrophobic over time because they're so cheap. Okay, then I'll take this towel and run it through the wheel the inner portion and let the towel do the work for me 
And then what I'll do is I'll take the towel and I'll get into the lug nuts. If you had, if I had my um, Metrovac Sidekick, or I could actually use the um, Ego Blower, I could actually uh, just dry this out. But this works just as fine, just as good, I should say. I'm doing it this way, so. Um, Wrap off any excess. I'll come back with a secondary towel. And now my wheels are clean. My tires are clean. Uh, at this, you know, from here, I could actually just come back and get my tire dressing of choice. Come back, top it off, which that's what I'm going to do after I'm done. And then uh, you're done with the the wheel washing portion. Very similar to the to the paint. It just it just depends on what tools you have. And um, if you don't have tools, just get yourself some towels, and you can do the same uh, a method on your wheel. So uh, just a quick uh, tutorial on how to use a rinseless wash for your wheels. Uh, you don't need uh, fancy tools if you don't have them. Again, you can always just get by with a a towel. Uh, if you stay on top of your wheel regiment and you keep them clean it's going to be very easy to maintain and you're not going to have much dirt being transferred to your 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 towel or whatever other tools you have and then um, if you have if you have low dust brake pads that also helps too so that's a, a walk a walk through with washing the paint washing the wheels I've already washed the, the front one over there uh, the car looks good just to give you an idea of what the car looks like right now it's clean it's glossy it's slick because i use the glass parency um, product and it's not super slick but it's uh, slick enough to where if i wanted to touch my paint for some reason i'd be like oh that feels nice uh, it's not overly slick uh, we're not approaching like slick and slide level uh, it's just uh, for those of you who are um, familiar with using boost from glass parency uh, this is just a, a tad less slick than boost uh, but that's the process that I do for rinse washing. It just depends on, on the tools that you have on hand. Most of the time I'm using the brushes, but if I didn't have the brushes, I could just use a towel. Uh, and then I kind of go back and forth with multiple towels on the paint versus the sponge. I don't really use a wash mitt, uh, but I'm, most of the time I'm using the, the mitt because I, for me the mitt is more efficient than multiple towels. Uh, but multiple towels is probably the safest way because you're getting most of that dirt coming off. Um, on the towel and when you come back to dry the surface you don't have much uh, dirt on the on the towel if any so that's the wash process rinse wash process that i do uh, hopefully this helps there's various methods to to use i hope one of these methods works for you um, but yeah that's the, the process i go through uh, to wash everything when i'm doing a rinse wash i hope this helps on what to do on the paint what to do on the wheels and I use the same approach on all these vehicles when I do a rinse wash. Um, in some cases, I will, uh, like I said, I'll just use the sponge because the sponge is just quicker. Like for example, I'll probably do the Camaro with the sponge. I'm gonna wash my dad's first with the many towels I have in my wash bucket, which I think on the other side. And uh, then when I finish that, I will come back and do the, the, U, the ultra black sponge on the Camaro and then I'm done. So again, that's uh, it pretty much for the uh, Rinse this wash portion, go ahead and post down below of your rinse this wash method, which you prefer. Uh, and kind of just go from there. Uh, the next thing I'm probably gonna do, which I think I do have a video, I think I just need to edit it and put it up. Uh, maybe I already did, I don't remember. Um, is a hybrid rinse this wash using a product like the Ammo Frothy, where you soak it and then you come back and you rinse it off and then you come back and just do your, your uh, rinse this wash. So maybe I'll just do that next time, just to give you an idea of of how that works. I think I already did one like that. Uh, if I didn't, um, you know, I'll do that. Uh, and then also I need to do, I'm waiting for the Merrillix pump sprayers to go on sale at Detailed Image because I'm gonna buy two pump sprayers for the, the foaming versions. So I can compare Ammo Frothy and the Adams one. Uh, and then I'm gonna go ahead and get the uh, regular pump sprayer from them uh, to replace uh, that one. That one's still pretty good, but I just wanna get something better. Uh, and then we'll kind of just save the SPTA um, for here and there whenever I, I don't want to feel like pumping I'll just use that uh, because the SPTA is really only good for foam and even then 
it has its drawbacks, which I've started to notice the longer I time, the longer I use that that tool. So, again, that's the rinseless wash uh, with different uh, wash medium here, um, towels, multiple towels, wash mitt, uh, sponge, and then also going with the wheels. If you have um, brushes, you can use that. If not, you can just get by with uh, towels. All right. So again, thanks for watching, and we'll catch you in the next one.